Hmm. I think it's time for another security talk. Well, actually, it's long overdue, but here we are, so let's get started. We have a lot of interesting topics to discuss today, starting with uh, a Google security engineer claiming that antivirus tools are a useless box ticking exercise. For me, it greatly depends on which antivirus tool you're talking about. Obviously, they're not all the same. But what he's trying to say is that blacklisting and the traditional AV procedures are totally inept in dealing with modern threats. And to some extent, I would agree with that. I think that we need uh, more proactive solutions, more zero-day solutions. But the funny thing is, he has basically targeted everything, you know, in terms of AV modules, uh, including intrusion detection. The alternative he has proposed is whitelisting. Now, whitelisting is okay, but again, at some point, it is going to limit the amount of freedom a user has while using their computer. He mentions that advice on safe internet use is horrible. Telling users not to click on phishing links and download strange executables effectively shifts blame to them and away from those who manufactured the hardware and software that was not secure enough to be used online. Now, there are various reasons why I will disagree with this statement. The first one being that I don't think that it is possible to secure any hardware or software effectively to such an extent that it's like 100% secure. And I'm going to, um, you know, give you an example so that you can visualize what I'm talking about. So let's take the example of ransomware. Now, ransomware um, uses encryption. Is encryption a bad thing? Hell no. Encryption is a security mechanism. So something which was created with the idea of keeping people's data safe can be used by a malicious entity as a threat. And there's nothing you can do about that because computers don't have morals. Computers cannot distinguish between good and evil. Technically, there is no difference between you trying to encrypt your files to keep them safe versus a malware doing the same thing on your computer because when you would run a tool voluntarily, it's going to do the same thing at a system level. I'm not saying that there's no way to distinguish ransomware from legitimate encrypting tools. There are other ways, but fundamentally, at the most technical level, they are the same thing. So the only difference is who has the encryption key. In one case, you have control of the encryption key and no one else does, in which case you say your data is secure. Now, if that encryption key is kept by a cyber criminal and used to get a ransom from you, now it is a threat to security. So at some level, the user has to be intelligent. The user has to take decisions, like it or not. I mean, that's just how the world works. What if we just say that encryption is a bad thing, so let's just remove encryption? No, you just pretty much took down the entire internet because the internet cannot work without encryption. Every single website you visit uses the same kind of encryption that will be used by cyber criminals to hold your false ransom. It's the same technology used by different people to obtain different results. And there's no way a computer can see that as a different thing, because a computer is going to see, well, it's accessing these files, it's changing these parameters, and the same thing's going to happen no matter who is doing it for what reason. The second argument is survivor bias. Often we tend to um, neglect the effectiveness of traditional tools like AV programs because, you know, every time we see this new threat that just beat everything and managed to do terrible damage, we just think that, oh, AV products are totally useless. And that's not necessarily true. So when you're talking about cutting-edge threats and uh, things like that, by definition, you are talking about the threats that have bypassed AVs. You are ignoring the vast majority of attempts by cyber criminals. So when you see this massive vulnerability uh, on the front pages, on the headlines, 
it's not a one-time thing. It's not that somebody just decided, hey, I'm going to do this, and they successfully did that. They keep trying these things on an everyday basis. They fail most of the time, and most of the time the security holds out. And the one time that they managed to find a loophole before the cybersecurity guys is when it gets out into the headlines. So it gives you the feeling that the uh, cyber criminals are really advanced and they're way ahead of the game, but that's just survivor bias. You can Google the term if you want to know more about the effect. So those are a couple of arguments that I would like to address. And uh, well, apart from that, it is uh, a very interesting discussion. I would really love to hear your views on this, both in the comments and on the forums. Mostly on the forums because this is a topic that can be really discussed in great detail. So let's move on to the next topic now. Well, this is uh, ransomware again. You've seen plenty of ransomware on TPSC. What you haven't seen is an entire traffic system shut down by ransomware. And this was not even a targeted attack. So it's not like these crooks sat down and they were like, we are taking down this San Francisco transport system. They did not even do that. They just simply created this ransomware and set it loose and it found its way into the transport system and had terrible effect. So what happened is uh, the transport systems remained operational. It's just that the ticketing system didn't work and people were just being given rides for free. Fair enough, some people would say. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it's deeply troubling and a great reminder as to the state of security in terms of how much of the world is vulnerable to very basic attacks. Again, I mean, in a lot of places, government agencies, even the particle accelerator at CERN is running Windows XP. So I really think the rest of the world needs to step up their game. Security shouldn't be just a geek topic. There are very few people who actually seem to understand and care about these things. And that will have to change as we move into the future. And more and more of our world is going to be ruled by computers. Of course, when the crooks find out that they have hit the jackpot, they're not going to settle for any low price. So they basically ask for... 70,000 US dollars, which is about 100 Bitcoin. But um, luckily, they were able to remove the threat and get the ticketing systems back online. Their data was probably encrypted, as uh, mentioned over here. This was the message on the screens. You're hacked, all data encrypted. They might have just removed their old databases for tickets and stuff and uh, just moved on. It may not have been a big deal. But there have been similar cases elsewhere where um, it has been much worse, like the healthcare department. Ransomware is really starting to trouble people big time. The next article isn't so surprising. Secret backdoor in some US phones sent data to China. So um, don't worry, this is not like a thing for most smartphones made by major companies, it is about some of those, you know, cheaper, lower-end variants that are made by probably Chinese companies. I mean, come on, if you've used Android, you know that low-end phones come with a ton of adware. That's how they make their money. And, uh, well, it turns out some of them have a backdoor. Most people probably would have guessed this, but what's surprising is the data that is sent. That is deeply troubling. So uh, it's not just like some metadata that ad companies are collecting for mass marketing or whatever. It's actually even sending data like call logs, text messages, and things like that, which could be um, used to a very detrimental effect to the individual. That's not, that's by no means fair data collection. This is personal data, as personal as it gets. The Chinese company was probably like, we don't care. We're making money. That works for us. And uh, the company, AdOps, which created the software, is uh, claiming that they created the software just based on the manufacturer's request. So whatever the phone company said, they did. Let's move on. I was afraid I'd live to see these days. Encryption in Linux? Insecure. Encryption by ransomware? 
unbreakable. <laughs> what happened here? Well, Crypt Setup, the utility we we're talking about, allows the user to retry entering the password again and again. So that can't be good. Brute force? Ring a bell? No? Well, you would expect that once you try the maximum number of password combinations allowed, the security would get better, right? That makes sense, but no, it actually gets worse. So once you fail, that is you enter the wrong password too many times, it actually gives you access to a shell with root privileges. Well, that's like um, once you've tried breaking into someone's house, they just come out there and hand you um, the key to all their safes and vaults. Yeah, that's exactly what it sounds like. This was probably meant for debugging, but it's a terrible vulnerability. First of all, of course, it's elevation of privilege, and it, it can give you access to the information stored on the disks, and you can actually then copy the entire volume onto, let's say, a separate drive that you have, and just take the data with you, and then you can brute force it later, at your convenience. You have all the time in the world, so why not? And you can even just uh, delete all the data if you're just trying to cause havoc. This thing affects a lot of cloud servers as well. So next thing you know, data will be disappearing from online servers. Anyway, um, if you have Linux, just make sure you have the latest kernel installed. I'm not sure if there's much else that you can do at this point. I think the Debian distributions have been fixed, but uh, Ubuntu has delayed the patch, which is not good news, no, because a lot of people use Ubuntu. But anyway, this is only valid if you use crypt setup. Now let's get back to uh, terrible things on Windows, which are usually much more terrible. Karma ransomware. There you go. Speak of terrible and it shall appear. If you think that adware is bad and ransomware is bad, what do you think about ransomware and adware combined? Isn't that an abomination? And that's exactly what this thing is. It pretends to be a um, Windows tune-up utility, as a lot of tools do. I mean, nowadays when you hear something like Windows tune-up, you don't even think that it might be a legitimate program that does anything, and that's not the case here. So you get this basic, um, you know, GUI thing uh, that just uh, shows you green and gray stuff. That's all there is, because it's not actually doing anything. It just shows you progress bars, but there's nothing going on in the background. And it's just a nice masquerade for the actual purpose of the entire program. So it's kind of like a Trojan horse. The traditional Trojan horse definition comes in disguised as something like Windows tune-up. You open it, it looks legit, looks like it's doing something. You click on optimize, that even works. I mean, it doesn't actually work, but it shows you a progress bar and you're quite convinced that, yeah, it's, it's, well, it's a program. But actually, it is going to infect you with this crypto malware or ransomware. Things just keep getting better. The final topic for today is that cyber criminals are now using Microsoft's OneDrive to send a lot of malware. So watch out for this kind of stuff. If you work at a company or something and you have a shared OneDrive, don't just instantly trust um, any message they give you because they can pretty much fake the exact format. It can look very legitimate as this one does. As you can see, you know, discount center, invoice, due date, balance due. I mean, uh, even I wouldn't know. If they have some kind of inside access to um, your organization, they can pretty much fake the exact same kind of detail companies and stuff, they usually have a general format for emails. Like if it's a friend's email, you know that you're a friend, you, you know how they write, but the cyber criminal probably doesn't. But in case of an organization, the cyber criminal can pretty much, if they have a sample message, they can just duplicate the style to make it look just like that. So watch out for things in your mail. And uh, that's going to be it for today.
I will be making some educational videos soon about ransomware and security topics in general. Since you guys voted unanimously for that in the last video, thank you very much for giving me your feedback. On that note, please uh, leave your feedback on this video as well because as you might have noticed, security talk isn't really a very regular thing right now. And uh, I don't know how, how often I should do these videos or what should be the frequency. If this video gets a lot of likes, if you guys love it, then I am going to consider doing more of these videos more often. So um, if you like the video, if you enjoyed it, if you'd want to see more, then just, uh, you know, give it a like. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you feel I'm helping you in any way and uh, you would like to see this channel grow and become something better than what it already is, you can help out and be a part of the entire process. You can support me on Patreon. I would really like to thank um, my Patreon supporters. The message really is free, but you still would like to pay for it. That really means a lot and gives me a lot of motivation and confidence in what I do. So thank you very much for your support. More great videos coming up. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. There's so much stuff to discuss. If there's one field in which there needs to be a lot of discussion and dialogue before we take major decisions, it is probably the field of cybersecurity. So, well, join the discussion here and on the forums as well. By the way, most of the topics that we discussed today were from posts on the forums. So if you haven't checked out the forums, you can do so right now at the pcsecuritychannel.com. So once again, thank you very much for watching, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.